Bruchem Aboyim, thank you very much for coming. Welcome to our home. Um, this class is uh, going to be dedicated uh, to uh, Alta Avram Ben Esther, Yeshev Rufu Shalema, and also to our brethren in Israel um, with the situation going on. God should protect them and help them. And uh, again, the end of the violence should, violence should end. Uh, Maybe the only way is with Mashiach, but whatever it takes, you know, we're ready for it. Uh, people shouldn't die. There's the uh, lecture this uh, tonight, <clears throat> a little strange, is called 86,400. What's that about? Imagine if you received $86,400 each day. Well, that would up to add up to $31,536,000 a year. That would probably put a smile on your face. <laughs> but that smile wouldn't last too long because you would then have to wake up and find that it's only a dream. These numbers are really not chosen randomly. In reality, we do receive each day 86,400, not dollars, but seconds every day. The catch is that you can only use up those seconds on each individual day. You cannot bank time. Use it or lose it. At the end of time, we will all have to give an accounting as to how we use those seconds that God has given us. Really, who could live up to the challenge of being able to account for every second of their life? The closest we come is with Abnovinu, Abraham our father, whom the Torah testifies that he bought by Yomim, which translates to mean he came with his days. Avram was able to account for every day of his life every day of his life, Herculean. We would be hard-pressed to account for even the years of our lives, let alone the days. And can you imagine being able to live our lives on the level of seconds? They tell a story about the Chafetz Chaim in Radin, where he lived, <clears throat> and where his yeshiva was located. There was a teacher who was diagnosed with a terminal disease. The doctors had given up on him, and they really didn't give him much time to live. He was a popular teacher, and so the students got together, and they were donating time from their lifespan as a gift to this teacher in the hope that God would allow their gifts of time to be bequeathed to him. So they even went to the Chafetz Chaim, and they asked him if he would donate any time for this teacher. He thought deeply for a few minutes, and then he said, yes, that he would, and that he would donate 10 minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes, 10 minutes, wow. One might say to him, 10 minutes, that's all? However, to someone on the level of the Chafetz Chaim, 10 minutes was precious. How much could he learn in 10 minutes? How, how much could he accomplish in those 10 minutes? To him, it wasn't inconsequential. It was real and substantial. Yes, 10 minutes. There's a saying that people use all the time. It concerns killing time. How very apropos. Anyone who doesn't use their time properly is wasting precious opportunities for growth. Imagine if you were taking a bus ride across the country and every hour the person sitting next to you would open up the window and throw a dollar bill out the window you would think he was crazy. But it's only a dollar. Think of all the time that we waste and we never give it a second thought. In Kohelis, in Ecclesiastes, in seven, chapter 7, Mishnah 1, it states that a good name is better than precious oil. And then it says the day of death is better, <clears throat> excuse me, than a day of one's birth. Now the ending of the verse can also read that the day of death begins from the day of birth. The clock begins ticking the second we're born, and there is nothing, nothing that we can do to stop it. Time, the greatest teacher of them all. I find it interesting that we say something in Hebrew and then we translate it into English or any other language. Many times we lose something in the translation. When we bless someone with long life, we bless them with the Hebrew words, arichat yomim, which literally means long days. I think the Hebrew words tell us a great deal about living. If your days are empty, well, then so too will your years be empty. If you have the wisdom to take care of the days, 
the years will automatically take care of themselves. Time, time dictates to everyone, but even more so to religious Jews. There are special and specific times, for example, for prayer, not only morning, afternoon, and evening, but these prayers also find within certain time restraints. All the holidays must fall out on certain times of the year. And then there is the Shabbat that comes out every seventh day. Circumcision should preferably be performed on the eighth day after the birth of a baby boy. Then Pidyon Aben, the redemption of the firstborn son, should be held on the 30th day after birth. The Upshiri, the first cutting of a young boy's hair on his third birthday. And then there's the counting of a woman's menstrual strike. The laws after childbirth. The list goes on and on. Time dictates our lives from the cradle to the grave. Tick tock. Tick tock. Until the time of Avram Avinu, Abraham our father, people looked like they were in their 20s for their whole life. It was Avram Avinu, Abraham, who asked God to bring old age into the world. A strange request, especially today when everyone's trying to look younger. You know, the market is flooded with all types of cosmetics that are meant to slow down the aging process. So why would Avnovino ask for gray hair and wrinkles? The story is told in the Chumash that Sarah, was, our mother, was abducted <clears throat> and taken into the harem of Abimelech, the king of the Philistines. Now, even though God prevented the king from having relations with her, but since she became pregnant shortly after her abduction, there were those who said that she's really pregnant from Avimelech and not from her hundred-year-old husband, Avram. To prove that Avram Avinu was Yitzchak's father, God made a miracle that both Avraham and Yitzchak looked identical. They were like twins. Although it corrected one problem, it, it created another. It seemed that those who wanted to talk to Avram would mistakenly talk to Yitzchak and vice versa. So to end the confusion, Avram Avinu asked God to make him look older, ergo, gray hair and wrinkles. Another reason can be best understood by using the analogy of vacation. You go away on a vacation for a week. First three days, you are laid back and relaxed. Great. But then you get up on the fourth day and you panic. All of a sudden, you realize that you only have three more days to vacation. Now you pick up the pace. You get up early, you hurry from one place to another. There's so much to do, so much to see, and so little time left. So the question has to be, really, what's the difference between the first three days of vacation and the last three days? Answer, nothing. They are both the same amount of time. Then what has changed? You now realize that the clock is ticking and your vacation is going to end very soon. You need to pick up the pace. There's a story, this is the story of our lives. Somehow, we don't seem to realize that the clock is constantly ticking. The question becomes, what are we doing with our time, our lives? They tell a story about a king who had been at war with a neighboring country for years, and he wanted to end the conflict. It was costing him too much in manpower, money, materials. So he asked his prime minister for a solution. The prime minister suggested that the king put out a call to his kingdom stating, anyone who could come forward with a solution to honorably end the present conflict should do so, and their reward would be 10 minutes in the royal treasury. Well, with that type of incentive, it wasn't long before someone actually came forward with a perfect solution. The king was thrilled. But his enthusiasm was short-lived. <laughs> it seemed that the word had gotten back to the king, that the person who had helped to end the conflict was developing a plan that would empty out the royal vault with great speed and efficiency within the 10 minutes. The king expressed his concerns to his prime minister, who said that he would take care of everything. And so the prime minister investigated and found that the person in question was very fond of classical music. So on the day that the lucky individual was to enter the royal vault, the prime minister had the most beautiful music piped into the room. The man began to load up his treasure, but when he heard the sweet sound of the music, it caused him to pause and listen. He was mesmerized. 
And then suddenly, there was a hand on his shoulder. His time was up. And he had collected nothing. So too is our time in this world. God has given us a precise amount of time. Seconds. We do not know exactly how much time we have, but somehow, we all seem to think that we have forever. When we look in the mirror, and we see the gray hair and the wrinkles starting to appear, we hopefully see it as a wake-up call. The clock is ticking, and we don't have forever. It's time for us to get it together, and if not now, then it may well be too late once we finally decide to at least try to fulfill our mission in life. You know, we've just finished the counting of the Omer, a period in Judaism between Pesach and Shavuot. During the time of Pesach, the Jewish nation was redeemed from the oppressive Egyptian exile. They were not redeemed because of their righteousness. They were redeemed because they had fallen to the 49th level of impurity. Had they fallen to the 50th level, they would have entered into the abyss and then they could no longer have been redeemed. So they, so to speak, forced God's hand to redeem them early. A sort of premature birth, after all, it was only after 210 years instead of the 400 that was originally stated. 210. That's the amount of days of gestation period of a premature baby. So the whole purpose of the redemption was for them to receive the Torah on Mount Sinai 50 days later. They had to ascend from the 49th level of impurity to the 49th level of purity to be able to merit the revelation of God on the mountain. One would think that if there would be a countdown to the special event, we would begin with 49 and count down until we reach one. Instead, we count from one and continue counting up until 49. But why? The intent of the counting days is not just to keep track of time. More importantly, it was to keep track of their spiritual growth. The only way that they could be ready to receive God's greatest treasure on the mountain, his Torah, was to make themselves a vessel for spirituality to grow from one spiritual level to the next. Each successive day was an important rung on the ladder of godliness that they would need to be able to comprehend the message that God wanted them to internalize and retain for eternity. Time was of the essence. Just like the 40 years that the nation spent in the desert wasn't an accident. The people needed all that time to grow into a unified, godly nation ready to conquer the land as free men. This can be compared to a baby in its mother's womb. Most babies need nine months of preparation to be ready to enter this world. But not all babies are the same. Some babies spend exactly nine months in the womb, while others spend months less, and yet others even days more. Each birth is custom made. And so too all of our lives are custom made. God has allotted, allotted so much time for each individual that is born in order for them to fulfill their special mission. Some me need more time than others. Others need less. Only God knows how much time is necessary. Our problem is that we don't realize that the 86,000 400 seconds that we receive every day is finite. Once they are gone, they are not coming back. We cannot bring back time. There are no do-overs in life. You know, we may think that after all, what's a minute? Well, try an experiment. Look at a digital clock for one minute. It will amaze you at just how long 60 seconds really is. Yet, when we are not watching the clock, it seems that a minute goes by like a second. When things are going well in our lives, it, it seems like time flies. And when we are going through difficult times, it seems like the clock never moves. Of course, we know that time is constant. It doesn't move faster or slower. All we really experience is perception. Somehow, our perception of pain seems to last much longer 
than our perception of pleasure. We really should work on that. Is a second really that important? You know, ask the athlete who was one hundredth of a second behind his competition. It may be the difference between a gold or silver medal, or even meddling at all. Ask the guy who just missed his train or the driver who was seconds late and somehow avoided an accident. Time does matter, even seconds. So now that we realize just how fortunate we really are, 86,400 seconds a day, maybe, just maybe, we can invest our time more wisely and become wealthier and wealthier. Then we can fund our 401k retirement account. As I've mentioned many times, nothing in life is an accident. You know, the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet is a tough, which has a numerical value of 400. The first letter of the Hebrew alphabet is an aleph, which has a numerical value of 1. 400 plus 1, 401. And K, of course, stands for kosher. So, 401k alludes to our spiritual retirement count in heaven. When we add up the numbers, the statement made about Abram Avinu, Abraham our father, becomes very clear. Bob by Yaman, that he came with his days, that he was, he was able to account for every day of his life. So, there are 86,400 seconds in a day. If we count across, 8 plus 6 is 14 and 4 is 18. The numerical value of the Hebrew word chai for life. If we count across the total number of seconds in a year, 31,536,000. 3 and 1 is 4, 5 is 9, 3 is 12, 6, 18. Again, the gematria of the Hebrew word chai for life. It was through his daily actions that Avon was able to bring his accounting for the days of the previous year. And in that merit, on Rosh Hashanah, on the Jewish New Year, he was able to ask God to fund his needs for life and blessings for the coming year since he came with his days. As I began this thought, I mentioned, what if 86,400 instead of seconds was dollars? Following that thought, if we look at the number as dollars, then we all are day traders. After all, the, after all, the funds are only available on each individual day. Anyone who knows anything about day trading knows that it takes a great deal of study and perseverance to be successful. God puts 86,400 into our account every day. And then on Rosh Hashanah, in the Jewish New Year, he looks at his statement to see what you did with his personal account. We have just finished the counting of the Omer a time when we counted not only days, but also weeks. Years seem to be something that we just naturally keep track of, if only for our birthdays, what a present. But hopefully now that we realize that we are given 86,400 seconds every day, we should be aware of not only the years, the weeks, and the days, but we should also be aware that each and every second is also precious. And in that merit, may we herald in the coming of Mashiach Sekenu quickly and in our time. I'd like to thank you again very much for listening. Again, if anybody has a topic that they would like to have me discuss, please contact me at the website below on your screen. And I'd be more happy to, uh, again, talk about what you'd like to hear. Thank you very much. God bless. Have a, have a good Shabbos. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And I guess we don't need masks anymore. <laughs> God bless.